Hello friends, welcome to Nimal Bang. I am Piyush N and today we are bringing to you a corporate conversation. And this is not like any other corporate. We are talking about a technology company, a company basically which has been the limelights and for all the right reasons. So we are talking about drones, a sector uh, which has really taken off. Uh, even in the recent times of the last year, drones have been in the news for all the reasons. And today we are bringing to you a company which has excelled in drones has really created grounds of technology in India, is supplying uh, to all the clients, civilian purpose, for the military purpose, corporate purpose, and then everywhere again, basically stitching government orders also. So let's try and understand about this company, Idea Forge Technology Limited. And uh, I'm now actually inviting uh, for the conversation, Mr. Ankit Mehta, the CEO of the company. And this company is now actually bringing IPO for you. So watch out for this con conversation as we now start with Ankit. Ankit, welcome to the show. Hi, Piyush. Uh, my pleasure to be on the show. I mean, first of all, it's, it's an exciting sector, right? Uh, because uh, we have actually heard and seen so many drone companies come up. Everybody's trying to really bring uh, technology in their own way. Uh, Idea Forge, you have created multiple products. Uh, and I was uh, trying to do my own uh, research here. And uh, we, we saw again, there is a switch uh, which you have created. There is a Natra UAV, Rhino, Q6, uh, and uh, military has already actually started using in Ladakh with your UAVs. So help, uh, help us understand about your products, about the scalability uh, from India or global perspective, how, how you have uh, sort of uh, uh, worked on the technology. Is it all Indian technology or there are some JVs? Sure, Piyush. Uh... So what I'll do is I'll go back a little bit on the origin of the company because it's really pertinent to understand how and when we started doing this technology effort. So Idea Forge, uh, uh, you know, even before we founded Idea Forge, actually us as promoters, when we were still students at IIT Bombay, we built our first drone uh, at that time. And uh, the reason we built it was because one of my co-promoters wanted to make a hovercraft and float it in the Pawai Lake right next to our campus. And uh, when the idea came, we were so excited about it. So we wanted to build an innovative helicopter. And in the process of wanting to build an innovative helicopter, we came up with this quadcopter concept on our own. And uh, we built our first uh, drone of that kind in 2004. So that's when the journey began. And from 2004 to 2008, we were having a lot of fun with the technology, building various iterations of the technology. And then in 2008, uh, we did a couple of very interesting things. We delivered the world's smallest and lightest autopilot of that time to our DRDO companies. Autopilots are the brains that go onto the drone that make it fly on its own. So its ability to fly is all because of that autopilot and the brains of the system. So that's how our journey began. And then after delivering those autopilots in 2008, when the attacks in Mumbai happened and we saw the uh, third and fourth floor of the Taj Hotel being observed by helicopters, we felt that maybe our drones could have done that task uh, because they would have been very, very small and uh, inconspicuous while doing that. So that's when we decided that we'll make drones for our forces. And this is a time where none of the technology elements of a drone were readily available off the shelf. All the technology elements were available only uh, because we built them on our own in that one sense. We built the autopilot, we had to work on almost all aspects of making the camera payload, the airframe itself, etc. So over the years, we've built the entire stack of technology and we made it uh, on our own and we filed a lot of patents as well. While doing that, we filed over 62 patents and have uh, more than 25 of them have been granted, not just in India, but globally in US and other places as well. So uh, that's the, uh, you can say, the genesis of the business and over the years what we've done is we've not just built these products for the technology sake but we've built it for our users to be able to operate them in the real world when we find that one of the configurations that we have delivered to them is not effective uh, that is when we gave uh, you know made made this drone that you see in my background which is a switch uav we made it for the first time in our country because we were giving drones that would air take off like an aircraft but they were not very useful because they they would not find as much space on ground to operate them but uh, we decided to make it something that can take off like a helicopter and then fly like a regular airplane give us the uh, very high flight time and then come back and land like a helicopter 
so a lot of our technology has been built grounds up based on the feedback and evidences that we have seen on ground of what will be effective and therefore uh, it has over the years allowed us to build uh, a lot of strength in this domain and because our experience has been of deploying this technology across the length and breadth of our country uh, we have been able to operate them in minus 30 degrees in the northern borders like you mentioned to take off altitudes of more than 6000 meters to operating in deserts of rajasthan to operating in the marshy environments and the saline environments in marine uh, parts of the country we have actually experienced a lot and that experience is what we embed into our technology and our systems and that's where it is helping our forces in a in a day to day basis it's been helping a lot of enterprises as well delivering either surveillance or mapping missions for various use cases Right, sounds exciting. So, uh, what has been the feedback from the military? Like, uh, uh, like what they've been telling you? Like, do they require very large number of drones, or like how you're seeing scalability? Or you now actually want to see, uh, sort of take the same pool and then actually start exporting? How's the business looking? So, what is happening in the last few years? If you see the way the geopolitical environment has shaped up, especially from the time frame after the pandemic. we have seen that uh, because of the clashes that happened on our northern border and uh, the global wars like between armenia azerbaijan or the russia ukraine war we have seen that there is a massive shift in perception of how drones were looked at earlier they were a good to have technology but now they have become a must have technology and that must have technology is essentially what is getting inducted at a very fast pace now under the fast track procurement route because there is a massive gap we did not have a large inventory of all kinds of drones and we had inventory of certain kinds of drones earlier but now there is a genuine need to induct the technology at all kinds of categories uh, in the armed forces and if you see the procurements that they are doing presently and the kind of numbers they want to eventually procure uh, it's a fairly large number and drones are getting towards reaching the early uh, induction of the technology in the forces at various uh, operating capabilities and in various operating scenarios and subsequently they will be scaled to the entire uh, spread of use uh, that can happen in the indian armed forces it's like you know a bulletproof vest or a rifle right wherever it has to be used it will have to be delivered eventually so that's how most of the forces scale these kind of technologies and of course the gains that we have had in building it in india in certain categories that we have been very effective in developing and like i mentioned the ability to navigate the kind of terrains we have has been very very useful we will be able to take them to other shores and we are in fact uh, doing that we have opened a subsidiary in the us we are creating the ability to do demonstrations and supplies over there as we speak so it's an exciting time uh, we are participating in exhibitions and receiving a lot of great reviews for uh, you know the kind of performance capability that we have been able to offer on our systems sure and uh, also ankit i have seen a sort of a very strong bump up in the revenue uh, in the first half of this year which uh, if i compare I see the revenue for fi22 around 159 cr and we are already talking about 140 cr for the first 6 months uh, is it something because of already the orders being won uh, what was the reason behind this and also how how actually is the order book and the order pipeline looking to you sure so uh, we have updated our rhp as well and uh, uh, from fi22 the early delivery that happened in fi23 was of uh, large opportunities that we had back from the defense forces and they were delivered and uh, that's how we saw the bump up in the revenue however the overall uh, numbers have been published now uh, and we did about 186 uh, crores of uh, uh, revenue in the overall fi23 on the operating numbers and overall 196 of uh, total income and uh, these numbers have uh, essentially been there uh, delivering all the other revenue and run rate opportunities that we work towards as well right and uh, what sort of a new product pipeline uh, we should be expecting like any sort of upgrades or new products uh, which perhaps you're planning or intending and also um, i would like to ask like you just mentioned us but what are the other top geographies you're targeting so apart from so i'll start with the last question first i think uh, apart from us uh, there are a lot of neighboring uh, countries where uh, Uh, today there is a need for inducting this technology there are also 
countries in and around the Middle Eastern region, the country and Southeast Asia, where there are potential explorations that can happen. And we are working towards some of those. And we have mentioned some of those areas as well in our RHP. When it comes to the overall product uh, pipeline and what we are looking to build, uh, what we are very clear is that we have to, one, continue to work on performance of our platforms, work on the reliability of our platforms. And in every iteration, we need to unlock more and more use cases that we can address with the drones that we have. Uh, every time you add new hardware, new capability, you can unlock and do more work either in the same use case that we were working on earlier, or you can also do use cases which were adjacent or entirely new use cases because you've been able to add that capability onto your drone. So that is one iterative direction that we will go towards in our products in the existing categories that we have. And we are also looking to build two new kinds of products. So one is the tactical category UAV, where we are expecting to create drones that can fly for much longer than uh, what we are doing with our current switch platform as well. And we want to go a much larger distance ahead or be able to do missions where we can carry loads and those loads can be uh, carried to uh, for a smaller amount of flying time, but carry a substantial load on the drone as well. So that is one category that we're working on, on the tactical side. On the other hand, on the middle mile side, we are looking to build drones that can fly from, uh, that can fly about 100 to 200 kgs, 200 to 200 kilometers. So that's a category where uh, we are wanting to get into the logistics domain and the logistics space of drones uh, to build for middle mile and first mile applications. Are you also looking to build attack drones? Uh, not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, from there, actually, uh, let's also sort of uh, take a look at the, the IPO numbers here. We're talking about fresh issue almost of 240 CR. The IPO is going to open on June 26. It's going to close on June 29. Um, the offer for sale from the existing investors is around 48.7 lakh shares. And uh, we're talking about uh, almost 60 crores of pre-IPO placement successfully completed uh, by the company. Um, the price band um, is around fixed around 638 to 672 on a, on a fresh issue the money which is going to come into the company 240 cr uh, ankit uh, what is going to be the fund usage of the money so we are looking to deploy the capital for debt repayment for about 50 crores about 135 crores in working capital and 40 crores in new product development Right, if 50 crores is, uh, debt is going to be retired, uh, any idea what's the average cost of debt at present? Um, it should be, I, I won't have an exact number, but it should be very, very high for sure. Right, uh, so again, basically if I do a back of the envelope calculation, your net profit for the first half has been 45 CR. So again, that, that should add a, a bit of uh, sort of a profit, a small profit the bottom line also again once the debt gets retired here um, in terms of the margins the margins are very healthy like if you're talking about net profit margins being 30 percent plus the better margins might be, might be 50 percent plus uh, are you like what's your view as you sort of uh, pile up more orders across the different uh, drone categories are these margins sustainable so, uh, you know, since the uh, numbers for FI23 are also out, uh, the overall adjusted EBITDA margins have hovered around uh, 47, 49%. And the uh, PAT margin uh, was at about 70 odd percent uh, in the revised numbers. And uh, that's because there is a uh, adjusted, uh, there is an ESOP uh, component that okay. in the adjusted uh, EBITDA is able to take care of uh, that uh, uh, you know, segment. So it's a one-time hit that we had slightly larger than usual in the uh, in the ESOP component. But otherwise, uh, you know, it is it is looking to be a steady uh, steady track. Right. Uh, so that's uh, perhaps uh, a sort of good relation from a profit perspective and also water pipeline perspective. Uh, uh, moving towards my last uh, question, uh, any plans of any joint venture in? for any particular part of technology or uh, the right now the aim is to actually develop everything in house so we are looking at a lot of partnerships we have done a lot of in house development we have the other problem that we have done so much in house uh, we haven't been able to collaborate externally so we are pushing ourselves to collaborate more we have actually invested in uh, a propeller manufacturing company as well that is helping us uh, build uh, propellers uh, in india and indigenize a bunch of our components. So wherever we are pushing the 
envelope of uh, wanting to indigenize technology or to look at uh, something differentiated to be a complement to our portfolio of products i think uh, we'll always be looking at partnerships okay ankit i think we'll leave at that uh, exciting business uh, very strong order pipeline uh, everybody knows again the demand is really strong strong margins that perhaps is going to help you really post strong return ratios also again uh, as you get listed and perhaps uh, all the investors and viewers will keep tracking uh, at this stage we'll extend all the best wishes to you for a successful ipo and thanks a lot for coming on the show thank you so much piyush real pleasure and uh, with that viewers it's a wrap on the show hope you enjoyed it subscribe to our youtube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss an update from nirmal bang